Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It's Friday, it's a big weekend of football ahead. Alan <coughs> Ruff and Barry Ferguson are with me here to discuss two matches in the Premiership and, of course, the uh, League Cup semi-finals. And we'll also look back at last night's Europa <coughs> League ties. Here's what else we'll be discussing. Okay, let's start with the Europa League ties. Contrasting fortunes for uh, the two Glasgow clubs. First of all, our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi looks at what happened at Ibrox. Rangers stumbled to a nil-nil draw at home with Spartak Moscow last night, but still sit top of their group. The atmosphere was electric at kickoff under the lights at Ibrox, but the game itself failed to live up to the fans' expectations. Rangers had two penalty decisions turned down in a game of few chances, with the best falling to substitute Eros Grezda. With the last kick of the game, the Albanian blazed the ball over the bar. Gerard said better finishing would have won his side the game. The Jurs are still unbeaten in Europe under Gerard, extending their run to 11 games, a new record for the club. Gerard, however, is prioritising qualification over records, and despite still being top of their group, he knows they'll face a very different task when they travel to Moscow in two weeks' time. Yeah, so the Rangers manager now has to focus on that League Cup semi-final against Aberdeen at the weekend at Hamden, but he did look back on last night and, of course, maybe that goal that was missing, it needed a wee bit of magic from someone in the team. Just that final little bit of magic or that last bit of quality, I think we've done enough to uh, marginally win the game maybe, but... Um, I thought we played very well for 45 minutes. I thought we lost control for 10, 15 minutes in the second half. We kept winning the ball back and then um, instead of making four or five passes, we kept giving it back. We lost our shape and our way, but then we came strong into the game again for the for the final parts and we always felt our fitness in, in the final stages it might be the difference. And, you know, We said to them at half-time, can we create that moment that gets us that breakthrough? And We created the moment, we just couldn't finish it off. Yeah, Rangers had chances, Barry Ferguson. Yep, um, I've got to agree with him. I thought the first 45 minutes Rangers were the better team. Um, they showed a, a bit of quality, but it was getting there. Um, it was that final wee bit that they struggled with. Um, just that final ball, or that, that final decisive pass um, was missing. But overall, I think Rangers did deserve to win the game. Um, but as I said... Uh, I think he'll just be disappointed that they're lacking that wee bit of quality in the final third. Yep, 11 games now uh, unbeaten and the manager quick to praise the side for their achievements. Very proud of the team uh, in general um, and obviously to, to find out yesterday that we were, um, if we avoided defeat, the, you know, we do create a bit of history. That's always important, it's a bonus as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's a nice, nice thing for, for people to talk about but you know, our focus now shifts swiftly to, to Aberdeen at the weekend, which is a huge game. Um, but the players certainly deserve praise. You know, 11 beaten in Europe from from where they were 12 months ago, losing against the team from Luxembourg. Um, you know, we've come on leaps and bounds. Yeah, I think that's got to be pointed out, Ruffy. Progress Niederkorn um, was yeah. an all-time low and suddenly he's restored a bit of pride. Ibrox was bouncing last night. Yeah, yeah I like his after-the-game analysis. <coughs> I think he's very honest and he's summing up everything he does. You know, you can't pick bones in it at all. You know, he see, says it as he sees it and he's right. Although they're talking about the record and everything, it's where they are now to where they were. It's the game that you're talking about. It's a difference of night and day and I'm sure the supporters will buy into that and see that they are going forward. Yeah, Scott Arfield's got a chance for uh, the game against Aberdeen. No Lafferty, no Morelos. Is that is that a, a body blow that they can still recover from? Of course you're going to miss the two, because uh, they're, they're important, they're the two main strikers at the club. Um, but I, I look at it as it's an opportunity for somebody else to come in and, and stake a claim. Um, and on the other hand as well, Aberdeen um, might not know where Rangers are going to go. Um, so 
normally Rangers are, you, you could probably say a certain eight or nine players are going to start the game. Certainly Morales up front would play. So Derek McInnes is obviously going to look at that and think, who are they going to play up front? Is it going to be Ryan Kent or a another? Um, but listen, for me, I look at it as an opportunity for somebody else to come in and, and show that they can they can play up front. Yeah, there's a contrast this time around, Ruffy, because the last <coughs> time both sides met, um, Aberdeen were coming off the back of a, a game against Burnley, going into the game against Rangers, didn't go according to plan for Derek McInnes. This time around, he said, you know, his team will be fit, there's no excuses, and they came up against a Rangers side coming off the back of a European match this time. Yeah, and that'll, that'll be the problem for Rangers and Celtic. You know, we, all, we always say if you're coming off a European g uh, game, you're, sometimes you're vulnerable, you know, and obviously both of them are talking about Rangers, are talking about players are not available. Celtic are talking about players that just aren't going to be there. So Hearts and Aberdeen will, will definitely be in their camp going, look, this is an ideal time to get both of them because both of them have got problems for the weekend. Yeah, uh, well, it's <coughs> a tough one to call between Rangers and Aberdeen. We've been speaking to the fans all week and getting their thoughts. Yesterday, it was Rangers fan David Brown. Today, we caught up with the Dons fan Ben Palmer to get his thoughts uh, on the big match. Our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi had a word with him. Well, I would expect a lot better performance than last week against Hearts. Um, I was at Tynecastle, were very disappointing, quite supine. It was a very poor performance. I think supporters would just expect a lot more energy than they got last weekend, um, and certainly than what they got on the opening day of the season, because even though Rangers went down to 10 men um, early doors in the opening day of the league season, we're probably the better side. Um, I think Aberdeen fans. We just want a lot more energy from our team to be perfectly honest. OK, and, and how do you rate uh, Aberdeen's performance so far this season? They're in the bottom half of the table. Perhaps their league standing is, is worse than their actual performances have been, but, but how do you rate their, their season so far? I probably think it's a fair reflection. Um, I don't think Aberdeen have been particularly good this year. I don't think they've really got going. But at the same time, we've reached the semi-final of the Cup. It was a big performance away to Hibernian uh, to get through penalties to get to this stage of the competition. But their biggest, they've only beaten the three bottom teams in the league. Quick one. Prediction. Score prediction. Probably going to go to extra time. Probably going to go to extra time. I just can't see either of these, twos, either of these two teams winning it in normal time. Don't think either team's got enough goals in them. It's going to be a long day. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so, no goals in them, and it's going to be a long day, says Ben Palmer Ruffy. As an Aberdeen fan who clearly, <clears throat> uh, like me, witnessed a, well, a below par Don's team at Tynecastle last week. Yeah, I mean, Derek McInnes can talk about the last game coming off the Burnley game, but the, the league table doesn't lie. You know, they're not in the same form as what Hearts are. So, I think Rangers will go along there, and the only problem they've got is their two strikers are out, but I still think they'll be good enough. Uh, to get a goal that will matter and I'm going to go for one nothing Rangers one nothing for Rangers Barry what are you going for? I think Rangers will be too strong I know what Ruffy just says they're missing two of their main strikers but I don't think that will have any effect in the game um, I think it'll be close, but I think Rangers will win by the odd goal. Yeah, OK, I'm going for 2-1. Yeah, I'm 2-1 as well. 2-1, OK. Um, uh, don't forget, uh, we're head-to-head -head every week. Uh, Ruffy just so far behind now, we're thinking of uh, maybe uh, just letting him go for a playoff to stay in the league. Uh, that's how far behind he is in the predictor, <laughs> but uh, uh, he might be uh, making a move back this week if he gets the correct scoreline. You can give us your thoughts on Rangers against Aberdeen. We now switch our attention not only to the other semi Final, which is the early kickoff at Murrayfield, but uh, let's get a quick update on the events over in Germany last night. Gabriel Antoniazzi looks at Leipzig against Celtic. Celtic suffered an underwhelming night on the continent again last night as they were comfortably beaten 2 0 by Red Bull Leipzig in Germany. The hoop started brightly with a fair share of possession and a strike just past the post from the man leading the line, Odson Eduard. However, defensive errors cost Celtic again as Leipzig scored two goals in four minutes. For the first goal, several Celtic players failed to clear the ball, leading to an easy chance for Mateus Cunha and leaving Craig Gordon with no chance. Portuguese winger Brummer then scored his second goal against Gordon in as many weeks as he put Salzburg two up. 
This result means the Hoops have won only four of 19 away ties in Europe under Brendan Rodgers. And when not including qualifiers, the club have only kept one clean sheet in their last 27 away European ties. Celtic sit third in their group, three points behind Leipzig and know that the return fixture at Parkhead in two weeks is a must-win match. Yeah, there you are. It was disappointing. Um, it was almost as if <clears throat> good opening 25 minutes and then the inevitable mistake, Ruffy. Yeah, I think the difference between the Rangers game, Rangers could have won that game. You know, Celtic never even looked like uh, uh, winning that game at all. And you could see when that first goal went in, particularly away from home in Europe, heads go down. You know, it's a players get into the habit of as soon as they lose a goal, you know, the confidence goes and they badly miss somebody like Scott Brown in these games. He, he would have been the one that could have kept them all together. But you're right, again, it was just two easy goals uh, at that level of football. No Rogic, no Brown, no Forrest um, and over and above that, uh, no Griffiths. Mm -hmm. um, so he's been sick. Uh, and, and overall, Barry, uh, injuries apart, the manager mentioned that last week they stood still in the summer and, and quite simply they may well have been a third or fourth tier Champions League side over the last couple of seasons but they're not even a good Europa League side in my view Yep, the players you mentioned if they're out the Celtic team they struggle there's no doubt the guys that are sitting on the sidelines that come in are not up to the same standards as the boys that are missing um, so obviously it goes back to the summer the recruitment that Brendan Rodgers was wanting to try and bring in I think it was the, the perfect time to go and strengthen that Celtic team. Two successful years, and I think they needed three, four big players to come in. And I'm talking about certain starters. Um, it never happened, and they're suffering for it just now. Um, and he's he's been open and honest about that. And they're, as you mentioned, they're not just a a half decent Champions League team. They're a struggling Europa League team. Um, I know they're looking okay now in the league. They've certainly picked up the last couple of games, but in Europe. Teams that I look and think they should be competing against these sort of teams, I know they're struggling. Yep, uh, well, uh, the manager and we were talking about it there, uh, Lee Griffiths hasn't been spotted at the uh, uh, training ground. And as ever, when you don't see someone for a couple of days, uh, well, what we call the sweetie wives, the scaremongers, the gossipers uh, start to think that there's a rift there. Brendan Rogers had to dismiss that today about Lee Griffiths. It's all social media. Yeah, he's in, he hasn't been well. Obviously, came back from the. Um, uh, obviously, been not going with the international team, and then he got injured, and then he's been uh, he's been ill for for a number of days now. Um, I spoke to Lee uh, when we had been we, we when we trained at Murrayfield, check in how he was. He's been ill, so he's been kept away from the kept away from the the squad. Uh, he's been connecting every day with the with our head physiotherapist. Tim, so uh, he probably gets about 20 messages a day off him, so there's certainly no chance you're not connecting with Lee. Uh, and like I say, he's uh, we just want to get him back fit and back into into the squad again. He's away for some more scans today with Tim, so uh, so sometimes the way it is, social media, it, it, um, there's always a bit of tittle tattle, and then it runs and takes its own life. These <laughs> these stories. So, uh, but no, he's uh, he's very much in contact with the club. Chinese whispers, Rafi. You can't beat them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I didn't think that was a very comfortable interview. I thought he was all over the place a wee bit there. Oh, wait a minute. Minutes. How many how many ways can you say he's not well? I mean, <laughs> what, what more do you want him to say on it? He's not yeah. well. He's not. He's not at the club. He wasn't well when he came back for the Scotland team. It was just his fitness he was trying to get. Yeah. You know, can no, you get can you get not enough. well after being not fit? He never really went into depth. What not well? Or the flu, the cold, or what? Yeah. what and he's he's got the cold, but he's all right to go to Murrayfield. And do you think there's something more sinister underneath it all? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You <clears throat> actually think there's something more yeah. sinister about the Lee Griffiths situation? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you shed light on that? No, I'm just saying with that interview, it was it never convinced me that uh, I don't think it was Brendan Rodgers was the usual. You know, interview where it was flowing and everything was fine. Yeah. I just thought it was sort of a. I don't think he would come out and say that he's been in contact. I know Tim, the physio at Celtic, he's obviously in, in contact with him every f uh, few hours to make sure that everything's all right. I don't think the manager would come out and, and tell lies about that. Yeah. Um, so. I'll oh. disagree with I'll, I'll yeah. disagree with Ruffy. Listen, you, you don't need to worry about disagreeing with him. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it since I met him. Um, but to be perfectly honest with you, um, I think the, the overriding factor here, whether it's 
you know, the, the semi-final or whether it's Europa League or whatever, or whether it's Scotland, Lee Griffiths just needs to get the head down and get a run of games, Ruffy, because this is an ongoing thing that never goes away. I, 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 I'm almost certain on this show over the, what, four, five, six years, it's always been a recurring theme, not fit, calf injury, mm -hmm. something else happens. Yeah. No, no, I think it was at one stage, Brendan Rodgers was, was, was getting completely fed up with it all. You know, I think you could hear every time Lee Griffiths' name was brought up, he wasn't happy about the way things are going, whether you know, he was sort of insinuating, why is he picking up these injuries? Why is it always him? Why is it this? You know, is it his lifestyle? Does he need to train harder? All that stuff. And that, that, that's what makes me believe there's something, <coughs> not something drastic happening in the background. I just yeah. don't think Brendan Rodgers is 100% happy with the way Lee Griffiths re leads his life. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll get Lee Griffiths fit um, if Celtic buy another striker <coughs> in January. Um, yep. It's amazing what a bit of competition does for you, Barry. It does, but I just hope he gets fit, because you know what, a fit Lee Griffiths, not just for Celtic and Scottish football, but for the national team, he's, he's a proper forward for me, he's a natural goal scorer. I just worry what's going on, um, I, I don't know what it is, but they've just handed him a new contract, I think, what was it, a month ago, six yeah. weeks ago, he just signed a new four-year contract, so I'm just hoping that he gets himself sorted and gets himself fit, because a fit Lee Griffiths is as a top striker. Yep, OK. Uh, Celtic, of course, making the journey through to Edinburgh uh, to take on Hearts at Murrayfield. Murrayfield will have the same uh, dimensions as Hamden Park, so everything is uh, equal in both semi-finals. Uh, what's Brendan Rodgers' take on this one? I think it'll be a football pitch on the day. You know, it's uh, it was a beautiful pitch and it's a great credit to the ground staff there uh, that work, that uh, it'll be in a really, really good condition. I think the venue, like I say, Murrayfield is a real iconic um, stadium. But of course, Hamden is as well. You know, it's a, you know, I've really enjoyed the games there uh, that we've played over these last couple of seasons. But we're going to another stadium, and for me, as long as the grass is good, the goalposts are there, and we've got half of the support, then uh, it should make for a great game and a great occasion. I think it's going to be a fantastic game. I'm so looking forward to going to this one, Ruffy, uh, because the Hearts fans have really, uh, you know, got behind their team. You know, 27,500 fans. Uh, this one has got the makings of a cracker. Yeah, I think it'll be great. We had the debate about Murrayfield Hamden. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Any magnificent stadium when it's full to capacity will generate an atmosphere. I think the players will rise to the occasion as well and I think anybody that goes along to that game will get an epic. Yeah. And I think it'll be superb. Well, we talked about the players that might not be available to uh, <laughs> Celtic. Um, Simonovic was carted off, so he could be uh, a problem for them. Hearts, on the other hand, might look to uh, Peter Herring and, uh, and drop him in there just in the midfield to solidify it as well. He might gamble on his fitness. Is it worth the gamble? Um, uh, that's obviously <laughs> Craig Levine's decision, but I mean, Hearts are missing, I think, four regulars that would be starting. Um, and you've just seen the, the weekend against Aberdeen. These players come in and, and handled the occasion and got the right result. I think he's got a, a real, real strong squad there. Um, I know he'll be wanting his top players back, but I don't think he'll have a concern because the way they've started the season and the way that the guys that have been on the sidelines come into the, the team when they've had injuries or suspensions, these guys have done a top job. So I'm like, like you, I, I think this, this game's got the makings of, of being a, an unbelievable game. Um, I can't wait for it. I think it'll be, there'll be no excuses. Murrayfield will be in fantastic condition. As you said, it's the same dimensions as the, the pitch at Hamden. Full, I don't know what it was, what was it 60,000? Um, round about that. Yeah. So it's going to make it a, a top game and I think, I think it will be. Yeah, I think it may actually be, I think it may be close to 70,000 to be honest with what you. Is that? Yeah, um, so uh, yeah, I mean the atmosphere will be uh, excellent because mm. both sets of fans will be charged up. There's always a wee bit of niggle between uh, Hearts and Celtic. We've had uh, Hearts, Aberdeen, Rangers, what about Celtic? Uh, we spoke to a Celtic fan uh, earlier, Ryan Fitzsimmons, to get his take on how he thinks this one's going. Definitely, uh, I think the past few occasions is all you have to look at. Hearts are a team who um, play a, a, a tough a tough game and the, Craig Levine's a manager who will uh, probably try and get that into his players like don't let Celtic get anything easy, um, get right into them. And it's one of the ways that we don't 
necessarily go out and play a tough game and sometimes I feel like one of our disadvantages is we let it happen too easily to us. You see us go up against the likes of Motherwell who are a team that always come to mind and, and even Hearts and sometimes you get the, the kind of dirty moments in the game and sometimes it helps you win a game. Sometimes you've just got to sit there and accept that all right, we weren't hard enough and uh, we let them kick us out of the park basically. So I'm expecting Hearts but you get players, Nay Smith and such, you know the names who can really get right at the players' faces and, and make it difficult for anybody so I, w- I would be expecting Hearts to come out and play quite a tough tough game I presume you don't think this is where the treble treble ambitions will end so give us your prediction uh, for the game at the weekend you know what it's, it's, it's difficult it, it could go anyway Hearts have had a fantastic start to the season there's no denying that even when they slipped up and they did suffer their first loss to the hands of Rangers they got right back on track they lifted their heads didn't let it bring them into sort of bad form they went back on the road and they've won games again so there's no denying they will make it tough for Celtic but I'm firmly uh, optimistic that we can continue on with trying to chase this treble treble and I think that will be at the back of every player's minds when pushing for the win this weekend. I think we will win the game, whether it's as emphatic as the last couple of games have been against Hearts, scoring six and four goals, maybe that's a different story, maybe that's a little bit uh, out of reach when playing against a team who defensively always make it a hard game for Celtic. So I I think it'll be a low-scoring one, but I can see us getting through with maybe a 1-0 or a 2-1-1. Mm, just scraping through, says Ryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks to Ryan and Ben for their opinions on uh, the semi finals. Ruffy? I, I think the way that Celtic are just now, uh, Hearts will think this is the best chance in a wee while. They, they've already proved that they can beat a, a full quota Celtic side. But if that team line for Celtic comes in with no Brown, no Rodjick, no Griffiths, no Boyata, no Simonovic, Hearts are going to fancy their chances. But Again, they have to prove that they're up for it in a big game. Right, OK. And I think You've will, done your usual the big will, build up, cuddle, 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 go, cuddle. No, no, I think this will go all the way. I think it'll be a draw right up until the end. But I think Celtic, having been there uh, on numerous occasions, will find a way to win this game. Yeah, OK. Well, one nothing. 2-1. 2-1. OK. Um, we'll never get that 60 seconds back. Barry, you know it, I know it. It was just a waste of time there for him. <laughs> oh. No, I think it will be close, but in the end, Celtic, too much quality. You'll have a fresh Rodjick Forrest back in. Um, I think Celtic, 2-1. OK. Um, just uh, a couple of games that I want to get your thoughts on quickly. Um, first of all, Steve Clark picked up a couple game ban uh, Ruffy, so I like him in press conferences, but he's, he's picked up a two-match Dutch line ban. Yeah, I think we all like him, but if you're breaking the rules, you, that's what happens. You know, the rules are there in black and white that you can't say the things that he said, although we all like it, and being honest <laughs> and out there, but that's what happens. OK, Kelly Hamilton. Uh, Kelly for me. Kelly, convincingly. OK, uh, St Johnson, St Mirren, this one's an interesting one. I think St Johnson at home will win that one. Yep, St Johnson will win. Yep, OK, we're all in agreement there. Um, Jimmy Boyle eventually gets the assistance job at Dundee. Barry, I feel sorry for Billy Dodds in yeah. this whole affair. I can understand fans' anger, but I feel sorry for him. Yeah, I can understand the fans' anger, um, what happened in the past, but I'm sure Jim McIntyre would have wanted his right-hand man, um, Dodgy. And Dodgy will be disappointed, because I know he's obviously doing a bit of media work, but... He's wanting to get on the, the, the training field and coach players. OK, um, semi-finals on my mind. Kelty Hearts uh, against Gala this weekend, is it not? Yep, yep, looking forward to it. Yeah, OK, that's about as much time as we're going to spend on that. <laughs> 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 and with that in mind, good luck in your first game as manager. We're doing a lot of pointing, you know, this and that. It's, <laughs> I can see it all from Ruffy, from Barry and myself. Thanks for watching. Welcome everybody to Barry and Ruffy's show here. Uh, we are going to play Pez 2019. Uh, as you know, it, uh, we have to select two sides. Uh, I have picked Cola Cola from the Mexican <laughs> League and Barry has picked Barcelona. So both of us are very expert at this. So as you'll soon see, that uh, it's going to be very competitive and uh, let's uh, see who wins. Right, let's go, let's kick off. Here we go. Bang! 
Okay, that's right. Oh, there. Just keep the ball. Keep the ball. <laughs> Where's Robbie? <laughs> 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 oh! Oh, it's an own goal! <laughs> oh, Messi! Shoot! Right. Oh! <laughs> What's that clown doing? <laughs> Ricky Tineo, there they go! <coughs> Lovely. Hey, come on, Pass. Ruffy. Pass. That's better. Right. I'm not even doing in here. Who are you passing to? It's going half him and two. Half him. That's it. Anyway, that's not right. I'm... This thing's vibrating. There's something in this. <laughs> Superb. Magnificent. Battered you. We've had a chance to play Pez 2019. Now it's your chance. All you have to do is like and share. For your chance to win an Xbox in Pez 2019.